الحمد لله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونتوب إليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له نشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا وسندنا ومولانا محمدًا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد فيا عباد الله أوصيكم بتقوى الله وطاعته إن الله مع الذين اتقوا والذين هم محسنون قال الله تعالى في كتابه الكريم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم كل نفس ذائقة الموت ونبلوكم بالشر والخير فتنة وإلينا ترجعون صدق الله العظيم وقال الله تعالى قل إن الموت الذي تفرون منه فإنه ملاقيكم ثم تردون إلى عالم الغيب والشهادة فينبئكم بما كنتم تعملون صدق الله العظيم وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم ما لي وما للدنيا ما أنا في الدنيا إلا كراكب استظل تحت شجرة ثم راح وتركها وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أكثروا ذكر هاذم اللذات صدق رسول الله فيما قال أو كما قال May Allah's blessings, mercy and peace be upon us We thank Allah, we believe in Him We ask for His help We seek refuge in Him from the evils of our actions Dear respected brothers and sisters A lot of concepts in our lives, such as goodness and evil, right and wrong, justice and oppression, gain meaning based on opposites. Each of these complements each other and is a means of trial for us. Life and death are also among the most exemplary realities for human beings. As natural and real as birth and life are, death is natural and real. And of course, it was created for a specific purpose. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals this in Surah Al-Mulk. Our Lord has created life and death to test which of us will do better deeds. الذي خلق الموت والحياة ليبلوكم أيكم أحسن عملا. Our Lord, who tests all of us with all kinds of trials, has assigned us different life duration. Whether our life is short or long, human beings have been given enough time in this world to take a lesson, submit to the Lord, and do good deeds. أَوَلَمْ نُعَمِّرْكُمْ مَا يَتَذَكَّرُ فِيهِ مَنْ تَذَكَّرَ وَجَاءَكُمُ النَّذِيرِ Did we not give you a life long enough to take warning if you were going to? But the reality is that this temporary life will one day come to an end and our body entrusted to us will one day become soil. Despite this, human beings mostly live as if they will never die. Because of this transgression, one of the most frightening facts in this world is that life comes to an end, that is death. People don't want to talk about death. Talking about it 
makes people uneasy. He wants to run away from it. وجاءت سكرة الموت بالحق ذلك ما كنت منه تحيد. The days of death has come with truth. That is what you tried to escape. But death is the truest part of life. At the most unexpected moment, it reminds us of its existence. And as bin Malik radiallahu anhu narrated, one day the Prophet drew some lines and said, this line is the goal that mankind hopes for. That line is the time of death. While a person is waiting for his distant goal, the closest fate to him or her comes suddenly. Death reminds us is in the most striking way of the shortness of the life of this world and the limitation of the servant. That's why the Holy Quran informs us often that many tribes and communities have passed through history. For every people, there is an appointed time. So when the appointed time will come, they cannot be late for a moment, nor will they get ahead. Death does not discriminate between anyone. Even the beloved servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the prophets, even our prophet alayhi salatu wa salam, has migrated from this world. Innaka mayyitun wa innahum mayyitu. You, O Prophet, will certainly die, and they will die too. Wa ma ja'alna li basharim min qablika al-khuld, afa'im mitta fahum al-khalidun. We have not granted immortality to any human before you, O Prophet. So, if you die, will they live forever? In the course of the sadness and shock coming with the death of our Prophet, let us remember Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu's striking warning. Whoever among you worships Muhammad, then Muhammad has died. Whoever worships Allah, then Allah is alive and cannot die. This reproach is actually another expression of Tawheed. God is the first and the last. Everything other than Allah is restricted with time and space. Every being on earth is bound to perish. Only your Lord himself, full of majesty and honor, will remain forever. Death is not an unexpected and scary end at all for a person who believes that our Lord is the only absolute power. As true believers, we must already be aware that we are mortal beings and in need of our Lord. We know that both joy and sorrow, life and death are by the force of Sunnatullah the order or law that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala owns both life and death. A true believer is content with everything that comes from his Lord. The great poet Yunus Emre expresses this awareness that a believer should have as follows. Hoştur bana senden gelen ya hilatu ya kefen Ya taze gül yahut diken, kahrın da hoş, lütfun da hoş. I am happy with whatever comes from you to me, whether it is a robe of honor or a burial shroud. In your power there is goodness, and in your gentleness there is goodness. Therefore, death cannot be a source of pessimism, unhappiness, or hopelessness for those who surrender to God. As long as they breathe, 
they must try to experience the gratitude and pleasure of being a slave to their Lord and surrendering to him. They know that the return is not to nothing, but to their Lord again. الذين إذا أصابتهم مصيبة قالوا إنا لله وإنا إليه راجعون. Who, when suffering visits them, say, we certainly belong to Allah, and to Him we are bound to return. The real depression, doubt, and fear are for are for those who don't take into account the hereafter. and do not feel a need to prepare for it. Death is a source of fear only for disbelievers and those who don't have true faith but pretend to believe. أو كصيب من السماء فيه ظلمات ورعد وبرق يجعلون أصابعهم في آذانهم من الصواعق حذر الموت والله محيط بالكافرين or It is like a rainstorm from the sky, bringing darkness, thunder, and lightning. They thrust their fingers in their ears against the thunderclaps for fear of death, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala encompasses the disbelievers. Our Lord addresses those who think that, can, that, uh, that they can live without submitting to him with the following striking statement. Now, if you are not subject to our will as you claim, bring the soul, the soul back if you are truthful. The words of those who have forgotten the impermanence of the worldly life at the time of their death are striking. حتى إذا جاء أحدهم الموت قال رب ارجعون لعلي أعمل صالحا فيما تركت كلا إنها كلمة هو قائلها ومن ورائهم برزخ إلى يوم يبعثون When death comes to one of them, he cries, My Lord, let me return so that I may act righteously in that world which I have left behind? Never. It is simply a word he utters, and in front of such people, there is a barrier till the day, till the day when they will be resurrected. A bad end awaits them. In the Quran, the heedless people who don't feel the joy and hope of meeting with Allah are warned. إن الذين لا يرجون لقاءنا ورضوا بالحياة الدنيا واطمأنوا بها والذين هم عن آياتنا غافلون. Indeed, those who don't expect to meet us, being pleased and content with this world, this worldly life, and who are heedless of our signs, they will have the fire as a home because of what they have committed. Death should be remembered regularly to take lesson. We know that our Prophet ﷺ used to mention death a lot, a lot, and visit the Baqi cemetery regularly. He said, frequently remember the destroyer of pleasures, me meaning death. It was written by Umar radiallahu anhu's ring, death is enough for you as a preacher. Oh, Omar. In the Ottoman tradition, in the Ottoman traditions, tradition, he is the only one who is immortal and eternal, was written on tombstones. On the one hand, it reminds, pe reminds people of Allah's supreme power and eternity. On the other hand, it expresses the fleetingness of the servant, and his helplessness in the face of death. It reminds the living that true happiness can only come from surrendering to God. There is no reason for a believer to fear death, expect 
that his opportunity to continue serving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ends. Death is expressed with the concept of liqa, meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in about 20 verse, verses. The hope of attaining the pleasure of Allah and meeting him is the greatest motivation of a Muslim in life. As commanded in a verse, our prayer, our offering, our life and our death are for Allah, the Lord of all the worlds. قُلْ إِنَّ صَلَاتِي وَنُسُكِي وَمَحْيَايَ وَمَمَاتِي لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ Death is the last stop on the way to this blessing. As the Prophet said, we are like a traveler, a guest who takes a rest in the shade of a tree for a while and moves on. The guest does not act like a permanent inhabitant. He thinks more of the original homeland to which he will return. He makes his preparations accordingly. Similarly, concepts such as death, reckoning, and the hereafter cannot demoralize a believer who has true piety and is devoted to doing good. There are good results for these people. It is stated in the Quran that the angels who will take the souls of those who have taqwa will treat them kindly and greet them, greet them saying, Welcome, salam. Salam alaykum udukhulul jannata bima kuntum ta'amaloon. Peace be upon you. Enter paradise for what you used to do. Friends of Allah, those who believe and avoid evil, carry the joy of meeting him in their hearts. There is no fear and sorrow for them. Ala inna awliya Allah. There will be certainly be no, no fear for the close servants of Allah, nor will they grieve. The Prophet ﷺ also said, Whoever wishes to meet Allah, Allah also intends to meet. And he deems meeting with a person who does not desire this as unpleasant. Hearing this, when Aisha radiallahu anha said that nobody likes to die, the messenger of Allah said, it is not what you think. When a believer is in a state of death, he is given the glad tidings of divine consent and grace. Nothing is more pleasant for him than the journey to the hereafter. When the disbeliever is in a, is in a state of death, he will be informed of the torment he will face. Now, nothing is as unpleasant for him as death. Just as the disbeliever does, does not like to appear before Allah, Allah does not intend to interact with her. The greatest ideal of a Muslim in life should be to die as a Muslim after a life worthy of Allah's religion. This is Allah's command. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu attaqullaha haqqa tuqatihi wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun. O believers, be mindful of Allah in the way he deserves and do not die expect in a state of full submission to him. In the Quran, intelligent people who always remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wish to die by being among the good people. رَبَّنَا فَاغْفِرْ لَنَا ذُنُوبَنَا وَكَفِّرْ عَنَّا سَيِّئَاتِنَا وَتَوَفَّنَا مَعَ الْأَبْرَارِ Our Lord, forgive our sins, absolve us of our misdeeds, and allow us to die as one of the virtues. Some prophets also prayed and made supplications on this path. For instance, Yusuf alayhi salam, Tawaffani musliman wa alhiqni bi salihin. Allow me to die as one who submits and join me with the righteous. For instance, magicians 
who believed in Moses' Lord in the face of Pharaoh's threats. رَبَّنَا أَفْرِغْ عَلَيْنَا صَبْرًا وَتَوَفَّنَا مُسْلِمِينَ O oh, our Lord, pour out, pour out patience upon us and cause us to die as Muslims. Let us remember the following lines of the great Turkish poet Necip Fazıl. Ölüm güzel şey, budur perde ardından haber. Hiç güzel olmasaydı, ölür müydü peygamber? Öleceğiz, müjdeler olsun, müjdeler olsun. Ölümü öldüren Rabbe, Secdede, secdeler olsun. Death is a beautiful thing. This is, this is the real news. Would the prophet have died had death not been a beautiful thing? The good news is that we will die. Praise be to the Lord who has killed death. Dear brothers and sisters, let us wake up from the sleep of heedlessness before death comes. Let us hold ourselves to account before we are held to account. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless our lives with goodness and beauty and to help us live with good deeds. I pray to him that we can carry the blessing of faith until our last breath. ألا إن أحسن الكلام وأبلغ النظام كلام الله الملك العزيز العلام كما قال الله تبارك وتعالى في الكلام وإذا قرئ القرآن فاستمعوا له وأنصتوا لعلكم ترحمون الحمد لله حمد الكاملين والصلاة والسلام على رسولنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين تعظيما لنبيه وتكريما لفقامة شان شرف صفيه فقال عز وجل من قائل مخبرا وآمرا إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم ارضى عن الأربعة الخلفاء الراشدين سيدنا أبي بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي وعلى بقية الصحابة والتابعين رضوان الله تعالى عليهم أجمعين اللهم انصر من نصر الدين واخذل من خذل المسلمين اللهم ألف بين قلوب المسلمين اللهم أيد كلمة الحق والدين اللهم وحد كلمة المسلمين اللهم اجعل القرآن لنا في الدنيا قرينا وفي القبر مونسا وفي القيامة شفيعا وعلى الصراط نورا وإلى الجنة رفيقا ومن النار سترا وحجابا وإلى الخيرات كلها دليلا وإماما ربنا لا تزي قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب اللهم توفنا مسلما وألحقنا بالصالحين اللهم ارحم أمة محمد رحمة عامة برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين عباد الله اتقوا الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروني أذكركم واشكروا لي ولا تكفرون أقم الصلاه